welcome back to the first virtual Create Summit, a forum on arts, creativity, and tech. We are very fortunate today to host a very special panel, very special guests on how arts, artists, and art forms drive creative thinking, human innovation, and change. Um, as you may already know, as part of the summit outcome, we would like to start drafting the arts manifesto of the new age, basically post-pandemic, based on the results of our discussions. To be of viewers, if you have any questions for our speakers, please write them in the live stream chat. Then we'll, they will be transferred to us and we can ask our speakers them at the end of each panel. Um, all right. Um, to be honest, when I was preparing for this particular session, I was extremely humbled. And just by the speakers that we have here today, um, it's really amazing. It's crazy. And uh, I'm so humbled, blessed, and honored to see all of you here today. And so grateful that you could find the time to join. Um, and I will just do a short intro of each, just to begin with, uh, Douglas Eager uh, on filmmaker, producer of Free to Rock documentary, author, a music producer, CEO at Eager Productions uh, with more than 60, 70 years of experience, right? In uh, art and art world and joining us from New York. Thank you so much, Doug. Well, thank you for inviting me. I, I, I'm not, not quite 60 or 70 years, but 50, 50, how long is it? 56 years. <laughs> I've oh been my God. It. And we are so honored and grateful that you could join us here. Thank you so much. Likewise. Uh, then I would go over to Jasmine Soifagari, opera director, opera coach, uh, renowned um, in, in the opera world internationally, both in Europe and uh, in the United States, author of Opera Guide for Beginners, among other books, joining us from Berlin. Thank you and good evening, Jasmine. Good evening, Laura and everybody, everybody, all the spectators and participants. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Of course. And it's so nice to see your opera corner. <laughs> yeah, it's my little Zoom corner. It's my little theater. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Francesco Atolini, uh, an artist, art director, curator, entrepreneur, communication director at Vita Group, a restaurateur, a restaurant overmaker, right? Uh, creative director, there are so many titles for you, a socialite uh, joining us from St. Petersburg. So nice to see you again, Francesco. Thank you for finding the time to join us. Thank you. Thank you to invite me. I'm very proud to be and to try to develop your uh, new project. Very proud of this. Thank you, Dara. Thank you, Francesco. Uh, Dr. Lakshmi Priya, uh, founder and CEO at Pachyderm Tales, a storytelling narrative project uh, transforming lives of many youths in India. Uh, also publisher and artist and event manager Thank you so much for joining us. We know, I know it's very late for you. So thank you so much for, for joining us. Lakshmi. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Lara. I'm humbled to be here with uh, these uh, people. You know, the, I, I saw their profile and I know how much they have achieved. Comparing them, I have achieved nothing. I'm really humbled to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you for joining our Create Summit, our first virtual Create Summit. And uh, last but not least, by far, Dr. Arnaldo Arancivia, uh, Head of Engineering at Staffel Systems, uh, educator, entrepreneur, uh, creator of many startups, uh, joining us from Silicon Valley. Thank you so much, Arnaldo, uh, for, for joining. Sure, my, my pleasure to invite and share with so many, such an interesting group of artists <laughs> and entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so now you know, when I just did this short intro, now you, you may understand why I feel so humbled. And I know that one hour is definitely not enough, but at least we can get the discussion started, we can get the thoughts flowing, you know, we can uh, use it to kind of transform the way uh, help transform other people the way they think about art and creativity, especially in this you know, post-pandemic where everything goes or went online or digital, right? And how um, how we can help 
foster and, and manifest the change that's happening right now within art, art world. And um, I would actually like to open this panel by asking you, uh, our esteemed speakers, uh, one simple question. What is the meaning of art for you? And I would go ahead and start maybe with Jasmine. <laughs> so perhaps to give you a little link to the summit you had just before the, the part, um, music was my first therapy in my life. So when I came with six years to Germany uh, from my separated uh, parents, my father is an Iranian, my mother is a German, and I came to Germany, I could really um, I could really heal through music, I have to say, I could express suppressed feelings. And this was so this was my first love. And uh, it stays until today. Art. Um, to me, it's quite broad, uh, whether it's a, a painter, a poet, uh, uh, a lyricist, a composer, uh, a film director, a playwright, um anyone involved in the arts i i i see it as a uh almost a spontaneous creative energy of an individual um that he he or she feels they need to express and share it with the world <laughs> it's a it's a very difficult question is uh <laughs> uh you know more or less what i think about it but uh, i will uh, try to add something uh, maybe some something spicy you know uh, you know that i wrote uh, in many years ago manifesto about art and was published in st petersburg um, also with a big uh, exhibition in a Rizzoldi Foundation in 2013. So uh, the theoretically, I must know what is art, but after uh, what's happened last, uh, I can tell five years, uh, I'm a little bit confused because, okay, art uh, can be all, no, now can be also a meme in, uh, in, uh, in Facebook uh, or a short video on YouTube or uh, an, an, an no significant uh, NFT. So art uh, now uh, can be everything. But uh, my opinion, uh, art must be what really uh, give to you an extremely big uh, emotion. It's a mixture between uh, beauty and uh, useless, uh, and um, and so on so uh, the most important question is not only what is art for you but uh, who is the artist today uh, what is the role of artist uh, in this moment and um, before i can tell you the artist uh, according to me is just a person who can uh, give emotion but now i change my opinion and i think that uh, Artists must solve the problem now, must be innovator. It is not more enough to give some beauty or be able to paint, be able to make a good design. For me, it's not, uh, it's not enough. Mm, artists must, uh, um, must give more and must be uh, the saver, the, must be the, um, uh, must must recognize all his power and try to uh, not save the world because I alone is uh, is impossible. It's uh, like utopia, but try to uh, to all uh, the power and the talent uh, and the work, of course, and passion to make something unique and uh, not uh, uh, replicable. No, this is what I think, honestly. And uh, if I want to be honest, uh, uh, I even uh, uh, will uh, put out uh, of my vocabulary the word uh, art, because art is, is uh, uh, a word uh, um, overused. And uh, I start to, to, uh, to don't like, and I feel me detached from this, uh, uh, this uh, nomenclatura, this uh, name, uh, and I will try to use another name. So the, I will, the question is uh, to the other, 
do you have another uh, name to to the word art because uh, uh, I don't like it for me because uh, because uh, everything now is art art bar art cafe art public art uh, prestance art uh, is uh, not uh, I can say it's not nice because it's a very nice uh, a uh, way to 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 figure out to explore the, the, the potential of everybody but uh, start to be again overused uh, and in my opinion we must try to uh, to to find another way to to not only to show but to to give a name like like to put a post it on the word uh, art with another name like uh, a therapy you know uh, uh, it would be nice because if you wake up, uh, uh, I don't know, in um, if you don't know the word the televisor and uh, you wake up uh, and you see a post it on televisor uh, like a coffee machine, and for you, televisor is a coffee machine. So um, stop to use art and we try to to define this world with another way, with another uh, uh, type of uh, approach. I'm going to combine what everyone said here. Uh, for me, art is very generic. It's very personal. Uh, for me, I like the fluidity in art. I can get up in the morning, I can paint, and then, you know, I can quickly shift to music. You know, this, this genericness that art has, uh, is, is what defines me, it what defines my life. So I, I should use a word like spirituality here. Um, in Tamil, we have this song that goes something like uh, this. It says that Kadavulum Kandasamium Pesi Mori Padal Dan. It means that, uh, you know, a language the layman uses to speak to God is music. So that's how I feel it, you know. Uh, for me, art is the connection that you, that you have. Um, in Greek, we have Republic, right? Like, you know, uh, Plato's Republic. In Plato's Republic, he, he talks about, uh, you know, allegory of cave and how philosophy is very important and how artists are twice removed from uh, Republic. I feel that, you know, philosophers and artists are one and the same, you know, they have to be kept in same pedestal and looked upon. So this is my opinion of art. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would like to give a more practical meaning of art coming from my background in engineering. So for me, it's basically every thought, emotion, every imagination, whatever you think in your brain or you feel, let's say, in your soul. And being an engineer, right, working uh, in a very high-paced environment in Silicon Valley, uh, contributing to many uh, leading companies on technology. Um, do you have space for artistic creative thinking there? Oh, definitely, definitely. So, um, so first on uh, your fifth question, in my life, I, I love to watch like classical arts. So one of my favorite is actually opera. And I had seen most of them <laughs> in different cities here in the States and, and also in Germany, precisely in Berlin, Munich, and enjoy it a lot. Uh, it's really calm, brings me peace, kind of disconnect uh, from what I do every day, uh, either business or, or work or networking, you know, talking to other engineers uh, in my field. Uh, but then how that influenced me, you know, what, what I, I would say, what I take home from just sitting in a nice opera theater and listening a sopran singing or watching some ballet, uh, I will say that it's always a source of inspiration, you know, like uh, each each piece, you know, I will, as, as Francesco say, overuse the word art, each piece of art that can be just somebody dancing or even the scenography or the singing or the music uh, makes you think something. You don't even realize, but Sometimes you're watching a show and your mind is working behind by trying to solve a problem. You know, like uh, it's always say, I, sometimes I say to my students, like uh, most of the solutions I have found on, on my field 
have happened when I'm walking in a park, biking, you know, sitting in a bar, watching a show, but not actually when I'm on my office in the computer, you know, that's completely uh, interesting. And totally agree. Yeah, yeah. So, you, and you never know. So it's kind of like you, you have, or how, how, how I feel myself, like I have two kind of brains, the one that's interacting in life, uh, sensing everything. So in this case, art, uh, while my other brain is kind of processing that information subconsciously and trying to create things. So uh, going for like some examples. So now I'm designing like system level architecture for uh, electric aircraft. That's what one of the current projects that we are working on. And talking about the different designs, the designs that are actually most agree or most accepted by the people are the ones that are actually beauty, that they show colors, they show symmetry, uh, they show something, I don't know, chaotic, but at the same makes sense. And that kind of schematics that we call with basically engineering drawings. Uh, some of them are precisely uh, are, are based in art. You know, when you go to an art gallery, uh, you see a painting of some things and then I, I used to inspire me and then I create the electrical system of an aircraft, for example. So that that is how art kind of influence and live in my day-to-day -day life and work i find this very very interesting arnaldo because for me it's like the opposite like if uh, i was not good in physics and maths and all that kind of stuff but if i see something technical which interested takes my interest or if i uh like some weeks ago i said in a lecture of law because i have a son who studies law and he said this is quite interesting if you are interested uh, it's open for everybody. Why don't you come? And this logical thinking and this coolness these scient scientists have for me is very relaxing. And I experience the same what you tell me when you go out of an opera because I relax totally. I'm totally focused on something else. It's like if you play tennis and you just watch the yellow ball and everything else is, you know, your mind calms down because you have to concentrate. And for me, it's the same thing. And besides, I would really appreciate if like in the at school we would more combine these things i mean the the fields like uh, if you would like in german schools you would teach like in the eighth german class you teach like uh, uh how to how to divide numbers right and if you would teach the same the bars we have in music if you would do this so the kids who are musical would not feel so bad as i did when i had maths i i felt always apart i was never i mean i was never good in that and um but if you would teach this like the same time everybody would be like more in one boat and a lot of these things like physics we have on theater on stages how stages are constructed or the history of lighting on stages is a history of physics is very very or chemistry is so so interesting and i think we should combine these fields much more and brings a lot of joy also and energy and a lot of energy wow wow yeah 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 i fully agree it's interesting also that it works on the opposite direction as well oh yeah it does on uh, for me i mean i'm just talking about myself of course nice nice <laughs> interesting question uh I'll have to address it personally. Yes. Uh, when I was a child, um, we got an early television and we had the radio and both were such so central to my life. And uh, I was inspired greatly by the music I heard, the performers I saw, uh, the films that I saw. I, I wanted to be uh, an actor and a, and a singer from the time I was three, four years old. And, uh, and I continued with that inspiration <clears throat> throughout my teenage life, and I was acting and singing. And uh, eventually, I, I, by a strange quirk of, of happenstance, I, I became a producer on the other side of the stage. 
And uh, when I think back of all of the things I have produced in my life, um, uh, one, they, they had to touch me greatly and inspire me. And that made me go forward and work on them, whether they were uh, maybe other artists would or producers would have passed on it because they didn't see a quick financial reimbursement. Me, I just stayed with it because of the project. And then as I got older, I became fascinated and almost I, I felt like I had to involve myself in projects that showed the power of art and culture to change society. And, uh, and so, so many of the artists uh, I worked with were social activists. And so, whether it was the civil rights movement, the anti-war movement, um, uh, so I got very involved with them because I felt they were doing more than just singing a song. They were touching people's hearts and minds and causing, I, I, I'll give an example. I managed a, a, a well-known social activist singer who, when she died, uh, the New York Times said, Odetta, the voice of the civil rights movement, dies at 77. And she uh, sang at the March on Washington and, and so many special rallies around the world. And she sang songs that touched people, made them think, and made them active in the subject she was singing about. And I, I once asked her, I said, in all the civil rights marches you experienced, I said, if you didn't have those songs of empowerment, those songs that brought you all together, like We Shall Overcome as an example and Blowing in the Wind, how much longer do you think the civil rights movement would have taken before laws started to change in America? And she thought for a minute, she said it would have been at least another decade. And to show how just marchers marching down the street, singing songs, how that affected society and caused change to where laws were changed. And, and uh, so, I guess that activism kept inspiring me and kept me working more on projects of that like. Thank you so much for bringing this up. Uh, uh, however, before going in there, I, I'd still like to address this question about the art permitting your day, everyday life, contributing to creative thinking to Francesco and Lakshmi. But it, it is very personal. Like, you know, I, st uh, I started with that statement, like art is very personal. For me, I had this, um, you know, I should go with Jasmine here. I had this feeling that I was so different from childhood. Like, you know, I wasn't able to pinpoint as in where I'm different. And most of the people around me thought I was mad. You know, they thought I'm crazy. But then eventually when I grew up, I started understanding the, the, the difference uh, was because I was able to connect with art. I was connect, able to connect with music. Uh, and, you know, painting more than what I was able to connect with people. Like, you know, I had absolutely no uh, relationship with people as much as I had with fictional characters. When I, when I started understanding that, I changed my way of communication. So if I, if I have to communicate a sentence in, uh, in a language, it would be very difficult for me. But if I have to uh, communicate my view in, in, through arts, it's very easy for me. So that's, that's, that's how personal art is for me. I do that for a living now. Uh, what I do is I help uh, people write. I help people create. I help people illustrate on everyday basis. So the circle around me is also, you, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's some, something that you do not feel when, uh, when you are 
performing or when you are when you are working with arts is mental fatigue like you know you do not get bored of it at all at any point in time and uh, there is this always uh, eureka moment like you know you are always constantly discovering something like you know i discovered when uh, uh, jasmine was saying about you know, Know, all this integrating of physics i was like oh there should have been you know that should have been there in academics when when i was a student the, uh, so there is there is always this happiness you know joys are around you when when you are performing uh, when you are when you are doing anything related to art and i feel that is more essential now after post covid world because i see a lot of students i see how they have become uh, an particularly in a country like india where you know we live in joint family still we, we do not have the separate rooming system like you know uh, my brother uh, you know until uh, he was 15 he used to share a room with me now i know when when you do not have this privacy when you, when you do not have uh, a space of your own uh, art is a world that you can go into you know you can just penetrate into and then you know finish what we are doing and then come back you know it's it's a world that's there right next to you you just can move easily and in a very flexible way uh this uh this is one beauty of art you know there can be thousands of people around you at the same time you know you can just zone out and be in be, be in your zone so art is very essential for mental health that's that's what i think particularly after covid without art we will not be able to go anywhere i i think uh, we most of us would have committed you know suicide or we would have been depressed if it is not hard i i saw that happening i saw my students transforming during covid you know i saw them creating on every day basis and only happiness that they had was those, that creation process um so that's what art means for me uh, i took inspiration uh, um from people and uh, and city in particular from a life of people <laughs> and uh, the need of people this uh, give me a big inspiration and also my need because i create a piece of art because i need to create this piece of art and uh, like a curator of course all uh, um, situation change because uh, when uh, Uh, I am organizing a, a, an ex- one exhibition, an exhibition. Um, I took inspiration uh, only from uh, uh, from the artist uh, I take care. And um, for me, it's very important because uh, I need this like a vampire. So when I finish my creativity and I can't stop to to make exhibition, I need to organize an exhibition. So I I. in a good way i use the the artist uh, um like a new life um, i don't know if uh, if uh, uh you you catch this uh, very very uh, uh, delicate uh, uh, signification significant uh, but it's it's like this ah you now you show my works no yes yes i'm screen sharing yeah. right now uh, for example uh, mm-hmm. in this city in this uh, in this collection uh, called uh, uh, beauty can happen a little bit later uh, <laughs> uh, aria, uh, aria yes i realized i realized the um, uh, 16 or or 70 um, paintings uh, uh, three installation one video and many many other uh, smaller um, um like sticker and uh, other things but the most the, the most important interesting uh, part of this exhibition is uh, in my opinion this painting and I, in this painting i took inspiration from uh, contemporary life and uh, old paintings uh, the old paintings i loved um, um, <clears throat> more when i was uh, an, a student in the academy of fine art in italy also in ruxel and um, if you can open for example the 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 first uh, oh for example uh this uh, is uh, one of my favorite is called mona lisa go away <laughs> uh, yes uh and uh, not be, not because it's my idea but but i think it's it's uh, very very interesting and uh you can uh, you can uh, see 
the painting of Leonardo, uh, one of the big genius in, uh, in not only the history of the art, but I think in the history of the world, uh, under another point of view, because you don't see Mona Lisa, but your, face, your eyes are concentrated on uh, Panorama and on uh, uh, Hermelino, uh, Hermine, this small uh, uh, alien creature. And if you go on first painting, there is the, the Dama, the woman, without her mind. So uh, uh, the first, yes. And uh, this painting is called Dama without her mind. So you, your feel, your emotion, your eyes are concentrated on, the, on uh, her hand, uh, empty hand. <laughs> So this is, uh, it's like a joke. Of course, I, I play with, uh, um, with uh, um, all the role uh, and all the aesthetics uh, of uh, these uh, crucial uh, works of art. And um, all this collection uh, works, uh, works like this. The, um, almost uh, every paintings communicate each other with uh, some uh, new elements, the old elements, contemporary elements. And uh, my eyes, like artist, uh, it's every time later, no? It's because uh, it's uh, beauty can happen a little bit later because uh, every paintings, uh, we can see these paintings uh, a little bit later. So uh, this beauty can happen also a little bit later. Uh, in this case, without Mona Lisa, without her mind that come uh, in Mona Lisa paintings and uh, so on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank oh. you. And this project that you did? Ah, okay. You want to show also this is, uh, uh, was um, realized for, especially for uh, uh, the Museum of World Cup in Russia in, uh, in 2018. And uh, I, well, it's, it's really simple. I mixed uh, together uh, um, all the, together the, the most important uh, form of, uh, of uh, all the uh, football player. And uh, for example, USA and Russia, Germany, um, uh, Germany, 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 Italia, Argentina, Brazil, uh, and so on. So uh, North Island and Ireland, uh, the North Korea, South Korea. And uh, I don't know why, but uh, this easy, simple project uh, had a big uh, uh, success of uh, public, uh, uh, media, uh, also many, many football forms uh, and the skits sold. So uh, I can I can tell to you that uh, was a more pop project, very closer to pop football uh, uh, culture. No, very very contemporary. You know, I can say uh, this. Uh, this uh, Thank you. you. But also, I also affected yeah. some some uh, some had some impact, especially in the sense of bringing nations together, probably bringing people together, right? Like, yeah, 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 absolutely. I, this, again, I took inspiration from uh, contemporary situation uh, from my life because I was a football player. So I love football. I did many art projects on football, uh, but of course uh, I don't want to monopolize uh, all the, our speech. Uh, but even if uh, I don't like extreme don't like the uh, artist uh, with the every time political uh, um, um, political fight or um, uh, like uh, I don't know I don't want to tell who but uh, it's not my favorite I like artists that make uh, like a, a, a love message or um, peace message but with with strong uh, and uh, really uh, interesting uh, um, Mm, uh, concept uh, and uh, an object, of course, not only like a simple painting. So you can you can uh, uh, dress this T-shirt. No, uh, you can uh, feel uh, United States together Russia. No, this is the the concept. You can dress uh, and you can go to play football. Thanks to show some, some 
of my work. I'm uh, like all artists, I think, in the world, uh, we are very scared to show <laughs> what uh, what we do. So <laughs> it's uh, you make like a surprise, no? Because I sent to you, I tell if you want, uh, you can show, but you you showed. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you thank you uh francesco and as um it's so important that you mentioned that art you know also um and the impact that it has you know it had on people especially when they realize you know they saw the artwork of bringing uh the nations together here and in, in, in your case for the world cup in 2018 um and um couple i will i, I want to uh, address that and actually show uh the trailer of the documentary film that uh, Doug created and that I had the pleasure to watch in um, in Berlin, Germany. Uh, so let me share my screen. That speaks precisely about that the change, the, the impact of art and cultural diplomacy uh, that it can have globally. Hi, this is Kiefer Sutherland. Free to Rock is a documentary presenting new evidence about how rock and roll and cultural diplomacy helped bring an end to the Cold War. Rock and roll was the way to express their views in criticizing the government demanding change. It features American rockers that toured behind the Iron Curtain and Soviet rock musicians. That's what led to the collapse of the USSR. Please tune in. Um. Yeah, this is such a wonderful documentary that uh, um, I had the pleasure to see. And Doug, I know that you worked with many uh, American and uh, Soviet artists, put it in a movie, in a documentary. Well, one, I, I had spent many years working in Europe. I also worked in the Soviet Union, um, working with the uh, uh, cultural ambassadors in America and the Ministry of Culture and in Moscow and bringing Soviet acts to America and bringing American acts to, to the Soviet Union. And then I, I talked to <clears throat> my best friend from when I went to college in France, who was an American singer musician. And then I lost touch with him and uh, for 30 some years. And then I found him on the uh, internet and, and we connected and he told me that um, there had been a, a political agreement created between the Soviet Union and the US in 1973, I believe it was, where um, there had been a famine in uh, the Soviet Union and they needed wheat. And so um, the, the deal that was made was we would send them wheat if they would allow um, Soviets who were of the Jewish religion, if they were allowed to move to Israel. And so um, what happened is every, and rock and roll was not, uh, accepted then, it was prohibited uh, behind the Iron Curtain and certainly in the Soviet Union. And so of the underground rockers who uh, were risking their lives every day performing rock, uh, those who were Jewish, they immediately applied to go to Israel. Those who were not Jewish, they married a Jewish woman. <laughs> or, but, but what's interesting is they were all then put on a train to Vienna, where um, an Israeli officer would meet them, give them a passport, and fly them to Tel Aviv, except none of them really wanted to go to Israel. Uh, their religion was rock music, not, not the Torah. And so, they all ended up going to San Francisco because they heard that was the summer of love. <laughs> and so my partner, Nick Binkley, who you met in Berlin, um, he got a loft where they could all live and they would all rehearse and they would all um, 
play their music. And uh, they all told him, and he and I had majored in international politics, foreign relations at the university. And they all told him, uh, they were absolutely certain that the biggest, the biggest reason for the collapse of the Soviet communism was rock and roll. Not, you know, not the other Cold War issues, which we all the nuclear battle, the war in Afghanistan, whatever. They felt that rock and roll was the biggest reason. And so he tells me this and we, and of course, we had all heard different reasons and nobody in America knew nothing about the power of rock and roll in behind the Iron Curtain. And so we started investigating and we got a film crew and flew to Latvia where we found out that rock music entered the Soviet Union 10 years before Moscow because Latvia uh, was on the Baltic Sea, Riga, and they could get transmissions from Scandinavia and from the West, whereas the Soviets had erected 2,500 radio jamming stations around the Iron Curtain. So norm normally people behind the Iron Curtain couldn't hear this music. And so in Riga, that's where uh, they started. And because they were an occupied country, an occupied nation, 1940, during uh, World War II, they, they wanted to get rid of their Soviet occupiers. And so music, this rock and roll music became their source of rebellion. And of course, I'm old enough to remember in America when rock and roll hit America, the city council, the mayors, the ministers were trying to get rid of rock and roll in America. Okay. And many times they would say, this is a communist plot. And, and of course, then when I interviewed the, the KGB general chief of foreign counterintelligence, Oleg Kalugin, uh, he told me, he said, the KGB and the Kremlin were convinced that the CIA created rock and roll. So it, it's interesting how this organic piece of culture and music could change society. It changed society in America. It helped uh, the, the terrible racism we had in American segregation. Music helped break that down, rock and roll did. Uh, and it, it spread around the world. And so we said, well, let's try to see if we can make this believable because we knew if we only had the rockers say that it caused this, nobody, in America would believe the story and we wouldn't get it shown on American television. And we, and so we, the first person we interviewed and he said he, he was in a, a high school orchestra, he was 15 years old and they had a concert and he, uh, prior to the concert, he told the bass player and the drummer, cause he played keyboard, he said, I'm gonna do a rock and roll song by Little Richard. And he performed a Long Tall Sally and he was kicked out of school and he was not never allowed to get a, a, a regular job uh, in Latvia after that. But he kept performing underground. He was arrested a dozen times by the uh, KGB. They threatened to kill his daughter they killed his son only because he was singing rock and roll. And mostly what he sang were Ricky Nelson songs, you know, like Justin Bieber. But the Kremlin was afraid of the influence he had over the young people. And so we said, my God, if the Kremlin was so afraid of this young teenager, we must have a story. So we kept going. And it was a 10 year project. And, and until we got our interview with Mikhail Gorbachev and our interview with Jimmy Carter, both who supported the thesis, uh, we knew no one would believe the story. So um, it, it was a fascinating 10 year project. And uh, so it was aired on PBS television in America in 2017, then one by one in countries in Europe and uh, 
Japan, Israel, et cetera. And, uh, and I did three tours of Europe of which the first one was when I met you in Berlin um, and, and probably 17 cities in Germany showing the film and leading panel discussions discussing the power of music and culture to change societies. Thank you so much, Doug, for sharing. And um, I know we could just spend the whole summit just talking about Free to Rock and its significance and uh, the historical, scientific, almost exploration that you did with the movie, uh, with this film and any other of your projects. Uh, this would really need to be uh, an entire create summit dedicated just to your activities, just like to any of our esteemed speakers here who have done so many contributions, so many achievements to the art world and to the society in general. Uh, what are the major challenges for our society right now, like post-pandemic, and how can art and artists help here? And I uh, would like to address that to Jasmine to begin with. Yeah, so that's, a, of course, very difficult uh, question, not only because it's a it concerns post pandemic it it to my in my view it's the communication i mean what doug was talking about right now i mean let's take uh, a lot of countries where people are not allowed to learn instruments i'm talking about iran i'm talking about afghanistan uh, where women are not allowed to stay on stages to be on stages where uh, to play music to play classical music and not folk music is a political statement is of, of, of already against the system which makes it really hard so um, i'm very uh, much interested in these projects where like um, through technique uh um like there were orchestras built in in afghanistan but of course hidden and of course it was is not safe to play an instrument so to 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 be in a in a in an art form can be very dangerous and i think this has to change and i'm really hoping that uh, these changes can come because music is like i'm just talking about music of course we talk also about paintings like francesco and uh, Lur um, writing poetry what, what lakshmi was talking about and also what doug was talking about but um music is an international international language you don't have to learn and your emotions are can evoke in a second in a minute even hidden even what doug said or some conscious uh, some conscious feelings can come up and it is a way to heal it is a way to express and um i think this is a huge challenge and uh, this this goes too far now, but Francesco and uh, Doug and I, we could also bring a lot of examples where it's really difficult now to, to play music or from which country you come and where you conduct, uh, where do you sing, which political opinion you have and as a private person is a real big issue today. And I would not have thought when I was a student that this would, would be ever a point. Yeah, I mean, what, what thing I was thinking when you mentioned challenge, all societies facing just pop up on my mind the uh, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. it's like now we are super technologized we are using technology for everything and mm -hmm. maybe in the future technology will do most of our common life jobs or common activities that like just like driving just like making coffee you know uh I won't say there is an art behind driving, but, but actually it is, you know, uh, this is because we have Formula One drivers, speed drivers, you know, so everything that normal activity you can do can actually be an art, but now like technology is taking uh, that job and then people is kind of lacking back and say, okay, what we could do, machines are doing everything for us. And I will think that art may be the answer, you know, like people have to become more creative. People have to start using their imagination to create new kind of jobs, new kind of occupations uh, where machines are not involved, where technology is not involved, you know. And I also agree with what Jasmine and Doug say is like now society, you know, I, the impacts of some political decisions are so big, you know, you can see how uh, a war or disagreement can create maybe food problems in the other corner of the world 
or energy or resources problem. I would say like art has to be like an instrument for communication, for union, uh, where you know people can express and resolve any disagreement. Yes, uh, also very interesting question, and uh, I'm totally agree with uh, our colleagues. Uh, uh, they say a lot, so it's uh, very hard to add something. Uh, uh, really interesting but okay i can spend my science and tell that uh, uh, we can help uh, artists can help uh, uh, world and uh, the situation uh, practically in my opinion um, use art uh, uh, like uh, marketing is instrument to uh, or promo instrument to convey a very impact uh, uh, message for example uh, moreover, uh, me and our team, uh, because also I have, uh, like, you know, a um, creative agency, we are very closer to, um, to all of the problems of all the world. So we try to have clients uh, very closer to ecology and uh, um, zero uh, emissions. So, for example, uh, I can't uh, speak one second about uh, hydro, this uh, instrument system, uh, um, extremely important because uh, um, try to, uh, to, um, uh, to, to use uh, and to, with this um, filter, try to clean the water totally and so, uh, you can save many plastic bottles uh, and so also I create a, we create a counter on the website that uh, um, every people use the, the this instrument save like uh, 1000 2000 or million to million bottles plastic bottles so and I have many examples so about we can uh, about this theme so we uh, what we can do is try to do our best no uh, in the term of uh, art like uh, marketing instrument to again convey um, positive message and use uh, our creative creativity to help uh, big brand uh, uh, or also a small brand they have a good idea uh, to save planet uh, so i know that it's very hard but we try to to choose uh, this uh, these partners, uh, because alone uh, it's very hard to do concretely something. We must do cooperation. In my opinion, it's because we are tonight with you to make cooperation, to share ideas, uh, and possible concrete uh, ideas. Uh, so this is uh, what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know if um, Lakshmi and Doug, have anything to add to this, or maybe any closing remarks from you? I do actually have uh, some. Oh, oh, Doug, please go ahead. No, 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 no. Please, you finish, and then I'll, I'll, okay. I'll speak. Uh, I do actually have something to add. Uh, we we were, we were all talking about you know how um, so artists has to contribute to the society, but artists have always been avant garde. You know, they have always contributed their share. But artists are also a part of society. And I feel that we feel we face more challenges in post-pandemic world than uh, you know, than looking at it otherwise. Um, there is this conception that you know artists are starving, like you know, they have to starve for them to, you know, uh, create a good artwork. I think that has to change, that definitely has to change, and it um, there, there is this distinction between, you know, discovered artists and mediocre artists. Like, you know, if you are discovered, if, if people know you, then it means that, you know, you are immediately uh, a great artist. Uh, on the other hand, if you're not discovered, it means, it naturally means it's you are a mediocre artist. Again, this distinction has to be broken down. We need more support, more motivation, less of nepotism. And uh, I think... Uh, more support for inclusion is also needed um, and th that would be my closing remark like you know let's start seeing artists as a part of the society and let's start 
to you know provide an economical system where they can work on their artwork on every day basis and then end up eating food in the end of the day uh, you know that's that's very important and as for runners it's our duty to do it like you know we have to start some initiative uh, towards that thank you for the time thank you so much and Doug please i, I just want to I was thinking of, of your last question and um, there are three issues that have come to my mind the last few years that I, I see where art is getting involved. One, the world pandemic we all have experienced uh, in New York, it was quite severe and uh, statistics have shown that the degree of mental depression that people have dealt with during the pandemic because they're closed in the number of suicides increased 20 percent because of the pandemic and i see that plays are being written and musicals are being written and songs are being written and poets poems are being written and and books so I, I think art is playing a strong role in that issue. Uh, other issues, the world environmental climate change issue, which so many people are interested in. I've seen art and songs and documentaries being made on that issue, that artists are um, becoming very involved. And the, the third that we've noticed in the last 10 years is the world refugee issue and again I, I songs are being written and um world uh, uh, organizations are using songs and are using theater to uh, address that issue and so i i think these are just three issues that have come up um that has affected people all over the world and art is very involved usually at a grassroot level that is starting to come together and and the people to try to address and help those issues um i know this is just a small panel right now but we're planning um, um as some sort of a happy hour for all speakers for all participants where we can all join you know and we want to um, show you how we want to use the results of the summit you know, also brainstorm on, you know, on possible collaboration and just spend a good time together. So, um, and we, we we have been recording everything. So you will receive all the recordings. They will be spread um, properly so that many people can get access to that. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. And there is just um, so much wisdom in here. Thank you.